Years later, it's a series where I take a look back on past pop culture and cinema and see if films that are 10 or more years older still hold up. Today's episode will be on An American Werewolf in London. It was released on August 21st, 1981. So, does it hold up? What year is it? Whoa, what? <gasps> what year? No, what? Year is it? American Werewolf in London. I've always heard about this movie that it's like one of the better werewolf movies of all time. I've just never got around to seeing it because I'm like, you know, I'll watch it and then never watch it. So I'm making amends. I'm actually gonna watch it this time. You got these two Americans named David and Jack going to Britain. And the first time, I'm assuming they're for the first time because their body language to what looks like the countryside of Britain, they don't seem to really like outsiders very much. You know, they're just two tourists trying to explore countryside of Britain and they don't seem very liked by these people of Britain. And once they're outside, fog comes in, they're hearing weird noises, and clearly the town knows this dark passing curse, but they just don't want to acknowledge it whatsoever. They essentially send these two boys to their deaths, or at least one of them, because Jack, I believe, the one in the green sweater, uh, gets killed. David runs off like a little bitch, but he goes, you know what? I need to be here. So he goes back, almost gets killed, but the townspeople, they come in and kill this werewolf. So that was like first 20 minutes. Like, oh damn, okay, movie's over already? I thought it was gonna be like prolonged, but turns out the movie is going to be about the werewolf himself, David, slowly realizing that by full moon, he's going to transform into a werewolf that's the whole story that's the whole movie and so it, it leaves like an interesting take i was like okay cool so one of his friends died the sole survivor not realizing he's in a turn hospital for quite a bit of time not a long time but i was like oh like clearly this film is low budget and i'm just waiting for that scene to him to transform i guess that's where all the money's at the big ethical transformation scene he has nightmares and dreams of him going through the woods of britain seeing himself in a hospital bed seeing his friend jack who's all scarred up he starts talking to himself hallucinating about jack jack is there to warn him about his transformation like anytime jack comes in find it to be hilarious and quite entertaining i think that's like the biggest well the second biggest positive is the fact that jack must come back with like hey what up david i'm dead but not really dead i'm in your head boy anytime he pops up it's just hilarious join him the looming threat that would come by midnight time or the full moon and then he also meets his nurse named alex and you know at first like there's one weird scene where she hears him and she goes in and the first thing he does is kisses her and i do find a word that she did not mention that at all and it would make sense later because she would take a liking to him she finds him attractive but at first when i watched it, i was like wait a minute she's gonna ignore that a patient just kissed her and then later on like a few minutes later she takes him out of the office to her place says that she finds him attractive which is why she allowed him to kiss her she's just like oh okay lucky boy or something like that i don't know but i did find it weird i'm like damn okay this is super convenient and just kind of all right good on you david after they're mating with each other guess who shows up jack jack's like hey what up david you're gonna turn he just they're basically taunting me like you're gonna turn at some point bitch basically is what he's trying to say again he's hilarious now i don't I don't know if alex realized like i think she knows you know david is a bit crazy because he starts talking to himself but i'm assuming she's willing to ignore everything about him all the signs and symptoms of a crazy person or turning into like a wolf because she falls in love with him she reveals that she had like seven lovers and can't really maintain a relationship for some reason when meeting david she just has like a spark you'd be like he's the one towards american boy he's the one and uh i mean she does look a bit older than him right i'm assuming she's older than him because she's like seven lovers i'm assuming she is she loves him that much to a point to where she's willing to ignore it there's a certain point where I'm like, so if you not care about like he's talking to himself, and I was just like, oh yeah, actually doesn't really care about that. She somehow falls in love with him within like two weeks or something like that. And it's like you are now mine. I did think it was weird. I was like, are you gonna ignore all this? And then something I did not expect this side. Well, I guess it's not a side plot, but it's like comes back to the main plot where the doctor checking in on David suspects that he's telling the truth in the town or countryside small town isn't telling the truth. So he goes over there. He asks the people at the same bar questions, and one of them spits it out, being like, yeah, this town is cursed, and that boy David, he's in trouble and i guess the response of this small town is pretty messed up like they know what's out there they know this world was out there but it seems like they refuse to acknowledge it but then they know it as well so it's super messed up again they sent these boys david and jack to their deaths they knew what was happening they knew this wolf was out there it was full moon could have said something about it but hush hush because they don't want to acknowledge it they're just kind of in their own bubble being like yeah yeah everything's normal werewolf guys shh be quiet don't talk about that like that's the type of mentality that they have and so this doctor figures it out they lie about the witnesses and whatnot he goes back to an ally being like where's the boy now and within that time david starts his first transformation <laughs> And this is the scene that I'm basically waiting for. Like, again, low budget, not a lot of money. Put all the money on the aesthetic model stuff. So, I was like, okay, when is that scene? And that scene happens. And it's an amazing scene. This shit still holds up. It looks great. It doesn't look weird. Like, the look of it, when it's like, you know, downtown Britain, it looks weird. But, like, this transformation looks awesome. He goes out and kills, like, a subway person and uh, this couple. When he comes back to the house, to Alex's house, he tells her that he just blacks out. So, it's like a like a possession. Oh, not possession. But, like, whenever he transforms, he just blacks out. He doesn't know what he's doing. And so, Alex, you know, knows 
knows what to do but she doesn't want to because she's in love with this boy i actually don't know if he's actually younger or not i'm gonna keep saying it because it just sounds better i don't know why but either way he goes to a, like a porno theater and he meets jack one more time in a very decay like jack you look awful thank you which looks pretty damn good and hilarious when i first saw it, i was like oh shit he's not human no more he's actually like a skeleton and it turns out he's like the good side of these like hallucinations or whatnot the other people that he's killed his victims he sees them he just looks at them being like you've cursed us you did all of this so it is a cool take blacks out and turns into a wolf he kills his victim he sees him like ghosts in his head and within this porno theater he's like starts moaning and freaking out and he transforms once again killing the people in the theaters that's also when he's in downtown i'm assuming it looks like downtown britain like there's lights and shit but I, you know it actually might be new york who knows i actually don't know i might look up what actual places but either way there's a bunch of lights and he comes out everyone starts freaking out and then at nurse the doctor and the nurse alex they, they all come in and watch as well the look of it like you could tell you know the budget was affected here like in terms of height on standing on four legs it's very much very low whenever it's standing on four legs it looks so small so you know it looked you know kind of weak and off but i'll just give it a pass and then they're in this alleyway about to shoot him alex shows up be like hey please don't don't do this even though you can't save him alex you can't save him they shoot him for very far away by the way like the length of this alleyway to where alex is police and brent they look like very far away from you know david and they still shot him which is like damn expert like marksman fucking shooters here and then once he's killed and shot he transformed back into david to a normal human and you know that's that alex loved his boy david but couldn't have david i mean he was just a tourist he was just an american werewolf in london so you know it is what it is so yeah this film was this film was good i liked it like i think i was definitely waiting for that transformation scene it looked awesome the inclusion of jack seeing him within his own head was really cool and then seeing him his last form of being like decaying and what it was really cool and aside from like alex falling in love with david was a bit weird like i wanna I, i'm assuming that time frame is two weeks like he was in bed for i think two weeks and within that time she just like oh i like this boy like I, again really just like okay whatever it is kind of crazy that she just doesn't care about the werewolf stuff but aside from that yeah it's a good werewolf film i can see why people love it i don't think i love it quite as much but it is a pretty memorable and good and interesting take on the werewolf genre because he like sees his victim within his own head again this is someone who hasn't seen a lot of werewolf movies so i might be wrong on that but in the end an american werewolf in london 40 years later is a movie that still holds up and is still pretty damn good so that's it for me this has been the road so far and thank you for watching